Howdy everyone, now Fuji's X system of cameras has recently been blessed to have a whole bunch of new lenses arriving from Fuji themselves and from third party manufacturers. Let's say you're on the market for a 35mm lens and you want to stick with Fuji's official autofocus options, well now you have a choice of three. The original XF 35mm f1.4 R is the grand daddy, one of the very first lenses to be launched on the entire system. It offers a very bright maximum aperture of f1.4 for getting fast shutter speeds and nicely out of focus backgrounds at an average price of $600 US dollars or £530 here in the UK. Your second option is the much smaller Fuji 35mm f2. This comes in a more expensive XF version with nice metallic build quality and weather sealing, but today I'll be testing out the XC version because it has exactly the same optics but in a plastic body at an amazingly low price of only 200 US dollars or 180 pounds in the UK, which makes it one of the best value for money lenses ever made, well in my opinion anyway. Its maximum aperture of only f2 though means it lets in only half as much light as its two bigger brothers and only half as strongly out of focus backgrounds. And your final option is the lovely new XF 33mm f1.4 RLM WR. This lens has picked up a great reputation already for its image quality and again that bright aperture of f1.4 can get you some gorgeous looking images but its expensive price of 800 US dollars or 700 pounds in the UK makes it a hefty investment. Well, let's see how they all compare in a number of key areas. By the way, if you want a little more information about each of these lenses, then take a look in the description below for links to my full reviews and for affiliate links too if you want to buy one, which goes towards supporting this channel. Thanks in advance. Anyway, firstly, let's look at their build quality, and it really is a case of you get what you pay for here. If you go for the XC version of the little 35mm f2 lens, then you are getting one of the most plasticky lenses it's possible to buy. Even the rear lens mount is made of plastic, and there's no aperture ring either, so you will have to control the aperture through your camera. You don't want to go dropping this thing on a concrete floor or using it to hammer roofing tiles. However, the lens's focus ring turns very nice and smoothly, and its autofocus motor works quickly and silently as well, so practically the lens does work very well on your camera. The lens is not weather sealed, although as I mentioned before, if you decide to spend a bit more on the XF version of the lens, then that one is weather sealed. Alright, going up in price, we come to the original 35mm f1.4. As one of Fuji's XF lenses, this one feels much higher quality. It features lots of metal in its construction and it has its own aperture ring, so you're going to get much tougher and slightly more practical lens. However, it's not weather sealed and its autofocus motor, while being pretty fast, makes a bit of noise as it works, so that won't be any good for video work unless you're recording sound from a microphone well away from the camera. Something I love about the 35mm f1.4 is its crushed coke can style metallic lens hood. I think it looks the business and it works very effectively. They're definitely not everyone's cup of tea though, and they're a bit of an awkward shape to fit into your camera bag. Finally, we reach the new XF 33mm f1.4. The aesthetic design, solid metallic build quality and tough weather sealed fit and finish of this lens tick every box for me that I could imagine. It's just gorgeous and feels like an unyielding luxury product. It's reassuringly weather sealed, including but not limited to a rubber gasket around the lens mount. The aperture ring has just the right amount of clickiness to it and can be locked in or out of automatic mode if so desired. The lens's autofocus is fast and silent, and also this lens has the lowest focus breathing of the three, meaning that serious video makers should consider it above the others. The 33mm lens might be the most expensive one here, but it's definitely the toughest and most modern. Ok, let's move on and look at image quality. I'm testing all three lenses here on a Fuji X-T3 camera with its 26 megapixel APS-C sized sensor. 
At f1.4, the two brightest lenses have excellent picture quality in the middle of their images with fantastic sharpness and contrast. I'd say that the older 35mm f1.4 lens is capturing just a tiny bit less detail here but really the difference is negligible. Let's look in the image corners. Quite a difference emerges here. Image quality really falls down on the older lens whereas the newer 33mm lens is still looking pretty good. Let's top down those two lenses to f2. The older 35mm lens is still struggling here whereas the new lens sees excellent image quality now from corner to corner. And now that we've reached f2, let's introduce the little f2 lens into the picture. In the middle of its images at f2, like the other two lenses, we see a fantastically sharp picture, and over in its image corners, well, its image quality sits pretty much exactly between the other two, noticeably sharper than the old 35mm f1.4 lens, but noticeably softer than the new 33. An interesting result, particularly considering how low priced it is. Anyway, let's top all three lenses down to f2.8. The older 35mm f1.4 lens is slowly getting sharper here, while the newer 33mm achieves complete perfection. Stop down to f5.6 and all three lenses reach their sharpest levels. The older 35mm f1.4 never really gets completely sharp to be honest. The 35mm f2 lens is noticeably better and of course the 33mm lens continues to dominate everything. All three lenses stay this sharp until you stop down to about f16 where the effects of diffraction take over and soften each of them pretty much equally. So the conclusion here is simple, the differences in image sharpness for these three lenses are pretty much confined to their corner image quality where the amount of sharpness changes quite a lot in order of their age. Ok, let's look at distortion and vignetting now. These are normally corrected by your Fuji camera, but if you shoot in RAW and process the images with third party software, then you can see the true performance. The older 35mm f1.4 lens shows a very small amount of barrel distortion, the 35mm f2 lots of barrel distortion, and the 33mm lens moderate pin cushion distortion. All three lenses show plenty of vignetting, their corners are dark at their brightest apertures. If we stop the two f1.4 lenses down to f2, then those corners begin to brighten up. Stop all three down to f2.8 and they see another improvement in corner brightness. Really though, their vignetting performance is all very similar, almost certainly due to the small size of each lens. Now let's see about close up image quality. All three lenses can get you nice and close to your subject here, although the older 35mm f1.4 lens gets a little nearer than the other two. Close up image quality is excellent with the 33mm lens, a bit ghostly with the 35mm f1.4 and outright disastrous with the 35mm f2. Let's top the two f1.4 lenses down to f2 now so they're all at the same aperture. The 35mm f1.4 picks up a lot more contrast and the 33mm lens just a whisker more sharpness. Stop down to f2.8 and the older lens looks excellent now and the f2 lens, even if you stop that f2 lens down to f5.6, its close up image quality still isn't perfect. Alright, let's see how the lens works against bright lights now. Each lens has very low flaring and performs well, although the older 35mm f1.4 shows a bit more glaring than the other two. While we're working in the dark, let's take a look at coma levels. At f1.4, the older lens sees some pretty serious smearing on bright points of light. The newer 33mm lens performs a bit better, but not perfectly. Let's top those lenses down to f2 and introduce the little f2 lens while we're at it. The 33mm lens is looking fantastic here, the older two lenses still see a touch of colour fringing though. Let's zoom out now and look for sun stars. You have to stop down as far as f8 for sun stars to begin to emerge here, but they're a little stronger on the two f1.4 lenses. Stop down to f16 and all three lenses are showing some brilliant sun stars, although on the newer 33mm lens they're quite long and thin. And finally. Bokeh. 
Firstly, it goes without saying that the two f1.4 lenses will be able to get you a depth of field that's twice as narrow as the f2 lens, obviously, leading to much more dramatically out of focus backgrounds. All three lenses generally yield some lovely soft backgrounds with little to distinguish them. I'd say that the 35mm f2 lens probably has the softest backgrounds in general, although of course they are not deeply out of focus. The 35mm f1.4 can occasionally have a bit of trouble in transitional areas which can look a bit busy. On the 33mm lens, particularly bright points of light can cause some busyness there too. Well then, overall, I hope you found all that interesting. It took a lot of work to put this video together, but it was fascinating for me to compare the three lenses side by side. The ultimate conclusion I can draw for you is this, you get what you pay for, pretty much, mostly. The incredibly cheap 35mm f2 lens is actually slightly sharper than the older 35mm f1.4 option at the same apertures, although its close up image quality is a lot worse. The older 35mm lens also has the noisiest autofocus which, as I mentioned, will be bothersome for video work, although in its favour it does have very nice build quality and also of course its aperture is twice as bright as that little f2 lens. And the new 33mm lens, well, it dominates everything really, its build quality is gorgeous and solid and optically it's well superior, but of course if you want the best you have to pay for it and it costs quite a bit of money. Which option would you go for? Let me know in the comment section down below, check out the description for links to full reviews with a bit more information, and well, see you next time.